A rational function can be written in the form r of x equals p of x divided by q of x, where p and q are polynomial functions and q is not equal to zero. Let's write out the generic definition of a rational function using the polynomial definition that we saw earlier. So r of x is a sub n x to the n plus a sub n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 plus, and that will continue all the way down to a sub 1 x plus a sub 0. And now we're just going to divide that by another generic polynomial. Let's call that b sub m x to the m plus b sub n minus 1 x to the m minus 1. And that will continue down to b sub 1 x plus b sub 0. I know that looks ugly and scary. We don't have to memorize that. Really what we want to be able to recognize is just a few key pieces of this. We want to recognize the leading coefficients and the leading terms of the numerator and denominator. And eventually we'll also be using the constants later in the chapter. Up next we'll find domain and write that in interval notation. Recall from previous sections that when we have a rational function like this, we simply want to exclude values that cause division by zero. So we can find that by setting the denominator equal to 0. Subtract 4 on both sides, and we get x is negative 4, and that's our restriction. So if you have trouble with interval notation, we can always sketch a graph. There's an open circle at negative 4, and everything else is included on the number line except for negative 4. So then setting up our domain, the first interval is negative infinity up to negative 4. We'll use a parenthesis since we're excluding the negative 4. And then we jump back to the second interval, negative 4 to infinity. And we now have the domain. In the next example, we again want to set the denominator equal to 0. This will help us find the restrictions. This is a quadratic that we can factor x plus 6 and x plus 2. Set each of those factors equal to 0. And solve these independently. x is equal to negative 6, and that's our restriction. x is equal to negative 2, and we'll call that a restriction as well. If you need help with the interval notation, you can always sketch a graph. We have a number line, but we are excluding the values negative 6 and negative 2. And then the interval notation will have the three separate intervals, negative infinity to negative 6, union negative 6 to negative 2, and finally we'll join that with negative 2 to positive infinity. A vertical asymptote is a vertical line that the graph approaches. As x approaches the vertical line, the function values shoot up or down to positive or negative infinity. An example that we've seen already in the past is the reciprocal function. Recall that that looks something like this. Notice that the y-axis or the line x equals 0 is a vertical asymptote in this case because as the x values approach 0, in other words, as the function gets closer to the x value of 0, the graph shoots down to negative infinity. Or if we approach from the right, again approaching 0 from the right, the graph shoots up to positive infinity. Those two curves will never actually touch or cross this blue dotted line, the vertical asymptote x equals 0.
do note that it is possible to have more than one asymptote. In this case, we'll look at this graph. And I'm just making this up, so bear with me. We have two vertical asymptotes in this case. Notice that as the graph approaches the x value of 2, it shoots up to positive infinity as we approach from the left. If you approach the x value of 2 from the right, the graph shoots down to negative infinity. Those two curves will approach the line but never actually touch it. Same thing with the x value of 5. The graph is going to approach 5 but never actually touch it. Notice the graph shoots up to positive infinity, or if we approach from the right, the graph shoots down to negative infinity. A horizontal asymptote is a horizontal line that the graph approaches. The line y equals b is a horizontal asymptote if the y values approach the line y equals b as the x values approach either positive or negative infinity. Looking at the reciprocal function, notice that there is a horizontal line here that the graph approaches y equals 0 but never actually crosses. So similar to vertical asymptotes and again on this second one we have the line y equals 0 again just the x-axis. Those curves will approach 0. Notice that a horizontal asymptote can be crossed for example, here, we have the horizontal asymptote being crossed, but on the far ends, on the left and the right, it is approaching. The function is approaching zero from the right and to the left. So it's possible to cross a horizontal asymptote, but you're never going to cross a vertical asymptote. In this example, let's look at the function and identify the asymptotes and then we'll also talk about domain and range. This vertical asymptote looks like it is x equals negative 4. So the vertical asymptote is x equals negative 4. The horizontal asymptote is this horizontal line y equals negative 1. And we can also find domain. Remember, domain are the x values. That vertical asymptote is a restricted value. So we're going to include all of the x's except for that negative 4. Negative infinity up to negative 4. Union, negative 4 to infinity. And then the range, recall that the range of the y values looks like we're including all the y values except for this horizontal asymptote, which is y equals negative 1. So everything up to negative 1, but excluding the negative 1, and then we go to positive infinity after the negative 1. To find vertical asymptotes algebraically, we first factor the numerator and denominator and write the rational function in lowest terms. That is, we want to reduce any factors that are common to the top and the bottom. Step two is the zeros of the factors that remain in the denominator after simplifying will be the location of the vertical asymptotes. For example, to find the vertical asymptotes of this rational function, we first need to factor the top and the bottom. So in the numerator, we get x plus 2 and x plus 1. In the denominator, we can factor the difference of squares as x plus 2 and x minus 2. Recognize that there are common factors in the numerator and denominator. x plus 2 and x plus 2 will reduce. We can cancel those two factors. And now look at the denominator. Look at the zeros of the denominator. So set the denominator equal to zero and solve. We get that x is equal to two. This is the vertical asymptote. 
Notice that this process is very similar to the process we use to find domain of rational functions. Recall to do that, we set the denominator equal to zero. In this case, we can add four to both sides and then take the square root of both sides and we get x is equal to plus or minus two. So there are actually two restrictions to domain. One of those, x equals two, is caused by the vertical asymptote. The other restriction is not an asymptote. It's actually gonna be a hole in the graph. So these factors that reduce or cancel will generate a hole in the graph that we'll see later. There's gonna be a hole at x equals negative two. So there's only one vertical asymptote in this case, x equals two. The restriction of negative two is generated by a hole in the graph. To find the vertical asymptotes here, we will start by factoring the top and the bottom. We get x minus five, x plus one in the top. And in the denominator, we get x plus two and x plus three. Notice in this example, none of those factors reduce or cancel because we don't have anything in common with the top and the bottom. So to find the vertical asymptote, we set the denominator now equal to zero. And now that it's factored, it'll be a little bit easier. And we solve. So like usual, we will split this into two separate equations, set each factor equal to zero and solve. X equals negative two and X equals negative three. These are both vertical asymptotes. In this example, nothing reduced after we factored, so we don't have any holes in the graph. In this video, we'll look at finding horizontal asymptotes algebraically. Recall the generic definition of a rational function, r of x equals a sub n x to the n plus, and that polynomial continues down to a sub zero, divided by b sub m x to the m, and that continues down to the constant b sub zero. Really all we're concerned about is the leading terms. Again, you don't have to have that memorized. We really just want to look at the leading terms, more specifically their degrees. If the degree of the top is less than the degree of the bottom, the horizontal asymptote is automatically y equals zero. Basically, it's just the x-axis. For example, y equals 2x squared plus 3x plus 1 divided by 10x to the fourth minus 3x plus 8. Really all we care about is the degree of the top being less than the degree of the bottom. Notice that 2 is less than 4. If the degree of the top is smaller, the horizontal asymptote is automatically y equals zero. Then for b, if the degree of the top is equal to the degree of the bottom, then the horizontal asymptote is the line y equals a sub n divided by b sub m. We're looking at a ratio of leading coefficients. Ratio of leading coefficients. For example, if we had 2x cubed plus x plus 7 divided by 5x cubed plus x squared minus 8, notice that the degrees are the same. So the horizontal asymptote would be y equals the ratio of leading coefficients. 
So 2 over 5. Y equals 2 fifths. And then C, if the degree of the top is greater than the degree of the bottom, then there is no horizontal asymptote. However, if the degree of the top is one more than the bottom, in other words, if n is equal to n plus 1, then we're going to look for an oblique or slant asymptote. We'll talk about that later. In this example, let's look at the horizontal asymptotes. To find the horizontal asymptotes, we simply compare the degrees. The degree of the top is 2, the degree of the bottom is 3. Since the top has a smaller degree than the bottom, then the horizontal asymptote is simply y equals 0. There's no work, it's just y equals 0, the x-axis. In the second example, notice that we're going to compare degrees again. The degree of the top is 6, the degree of bottom is also 6. If the degrees are the same, then the horizontal asymptote is a ratio of leading coefficients. So the leading coefficients are 5 and 2, so the horizontal asymptote is y equals 5 halves. Remember, when finding horizontal asymptotes, we simply compare degrees of the top and the bottom. In this video, we'll look at finding oblique or slant asymptotes. Notice that the degree of the numerator is 2 and the degree of the denominator is 1. The degree of the top is 1 more than the bottom. That's what indicates we need to find the oblique asymptote. To do that, we need to use division. And typically, we want to use long division. But in this case, since the divisor, the bottom, is linear, we can use synthetic division. So we'll list the coefficients of the numerator, 1, 4, 1. And then in the box, we'll put the opposite of what we see here, 2. Then we drop down the first number. 2 times 1 is 2. Add, we get 6. 2 times 6 is 12. Add, and we get 13. Now remember that 13 is a remainder. Typically, we want 0 remainders, but that's when we're finding zeros. We're not finding zeros here, we're finding the oblique asymptote. So really all we care about is these first two. We're going to ignore the remainder. And if we translate that back into an expression, that is 1x plus 6. And all we need to do is put y equals in front of that, and we have the oblique asymptote. In our next example, again, we are finding the oblique or slant asymptote. Notice that the degree of the top is one more than the degree of the bottom. That's what indicates we need to find the oblique. We need to use long division this time. We can't use synthetic because the divisor, the denominator, is not linear. x squared minus 3x plus 5 is the divisor. And then inside the house, we have x cubed plus 2x squared plus 0x minus 1. Notice that we need a 0x. We need that 0 placeholder because we're missing an x in the numerator, in the dividend. And now we do the division. First term divided by first term. So x cubed divided by x squared, if you need to, we can do that off to the side. That gives us an x. So that goes up here. And then we distribute. x times x squared is x cubed. x times negative 3x is negative 3x squared. x times 5 is 5x. And then we subtract that quantity. The first terms go away. Then we have 2 minus negative 3, that's 2 plus 3, that will give us 5x squared 
Then we have 0 minus 5, that is minus 5x. Then we drop down to negative 1. Then we repeat the process. First term divided by first term. So if you want to, off to the side, 5x squared divided by x squared, that gives us 5. That goes up in the quotient. And we're basically done with what we need, but let's continue to distribute. 5 times x squared is 5x squared. 5 times negative 3x is negative 15x. And then 5 times 5 is 25. We will then subtract. First two terms cancel. Negative 5 minus negative 15 is negative 5 plus 15 or 10x, then negative 1 minus 25 is negative 26. But this is a remainder which we actually don't need. So all we use is the quotient, put y equals in front of that, and we now have the equation of the oblique asymptote or slant asymptote. Let's find all asymptotes of the rational function. We'll start by finding the vertical asymptotes. To do that, we first need to factor the numerator and denominator. The numerator, notice, is a difference of cubes, so we can factor as x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 4. And in the denominator, we'll factor the quadratic Two numbers that multiply to negative 10 and add to 3 are plus 5 and minus 2. Notice that we have a common factor in the numerator and denominator, so that's going to reduce out. And looking at the resulting denominator, we'll set it equal to 0, and we get x equals negative 5. This is the vertical asymptote. Remember that the factor that reduces out the x minus 2 indicates that there's a hole at x equals 2. That is not a vertical asymptote. To find the horizontal asymptotes, we compare the degrees. Since the degree of the top is 3 and the degree of the bottom is 2, the top has a higher degree, there is automatically no horizontal asymptote. Next recognize that the top is one more degree than the bottom, so we can find the oblique asymptote. We can't use synthetic division here because the denominator is not linear, so we have to use long division x squared plus 3x minus 10 is the divisor, and inside the house we write the numerator, the dividend. x cubed plus 0x squared plus 0x minus 8. And from here we take the first term and divide it by the first term. If you want to, we can do that off to the side. x cubed divided by x squared is x that goes in the quotient, then we distribute x cubed plus 3x squared minus 10x. We'll then subtract that. The x cubed go away. We're left with negative 3x squared plus 10x, and then we drop down the negative 8. Then we repeat that process. First term divided by first term negative 3x squared divided by x squared is negative 3. So that goes up in the top. And at this point we can stop because we'll just get a remainder which we're going to ignore anyway. So the oblique asymptote, we just simply take this expression and put a y in front of it. y equals x minus 3 is the oblique asymptote also known as the slant asymptote. Up next we have 
another rational function. Let's start by finding the vertical asymptotes. To do that, we need to factor. So we will factor the top and the bottom. And since these are quadratics where a is not 1, we need to use the AC method. So looking at the first quadratic, the numerator, AC is negative 30. We need two numbers that multiply to negative 30 and add to negative 15. That will be negative 15 and 2. So rewriting the quadratic, we have 5x squared minus 15x plus 2x minus 6. Now we can factor. Pull out that GCF, we're left with x minus 3. Pull out the next GCF, we're left with x minus 3. So now continuing, continuing to factor, x minus 3 times 5x plus 2. We'll put that in the numerator. And then for the denominator, again, we need to use the AC method. AC is negative 6. Two numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 5 are negative 6 and 1. So 2x squared minus 6x plus x minus 3. Pulling out the GCF, we get 2x times x minus 3, then 1 times x minus 3. Continuing to factor, we get x minus 3 times 2x plus 1. We'll put that in the denominator. Notice now that we've got it in factored form, we can reduce. x minus 3 goes away, that's going to be a hole in the graph. We look at the denominator now and set 2x plus 1 equal to 0. 2x equals negative 1. x equals negative 1 half. That is our vertical asymptote. To find the horizontal asymptote, we compare the degrees. Notice the degree of the top and the bottom are both 2, so we compare a ratio of the leading coefficients. So the horizontal asymptote is a ratio of the leading coefficients. y equals 5 halves. We do not look for an oblique because we have the horizontal.